All right, moving on to J6, which is our next review section. This time we are focusing on interval notation. So many times we are gonna write our answers in interval notation. So we need to know how to go from set notation to interval notation. We also need to know how to go from a graph to interval notation and kind of how to go between all those different um, ways of representing our answer. So interval notation is basically saying my answers can be from this value to this value or anything in between, right? Set notation is a little bit more mathematically precise way of defining a set of solutions. So we're gonna kind of go over both and how they're related so that you'll be able to navigate easily between one form to the other. So when we look at set notation, this is just a really fancy way of saying my answers are these numbers as long as they satisfy something, okay? So we write it like this with the little squiggly braces right, or curly brackets, I'm not really sure what those are called. <laughs> um, but that is set notation anytime we use these little squiggly brackets. And then we say x, or whatever our variable is. So what that means is the set of all possible x's. x could be anything, okay? So this is our possible solutions. X is all possible solutions, okay? And then this little line right here represents such that, okay? So X could be anything such that it satisfies something, okay? So it has to satisfy this, satisfy this, okay? So X, any X could be a possibility as long as it satisfies whatever the mathematical statement is that is made after this line. So let me show you an example. So if I have the set of all X's such that, okay, X is less than two, okay? What this is saying is X is any solution, any solution in the universe, as long as it's smaller than two. So that could be one, that could be 1.9999999, it could be negative 10 million, it could be zero, right? It's, it's not possible to list every possible solution. So we write it like this, we say X is a solution as long as X is some number smaller than two, because that's our, our stipulation, okay? So let's think about what this means real quick. If X is less than two, and I'm going to go ahead and just go over real quickly the less than sign. Less than and greater than. A lot of people read it wrong. We have less than, we have less than or equal to, we have greater than, and we have greater than or equal to, right? So some people teach that if you see the small side first, it's less than. If you see the big side first, it's greater than. But that doesn't always help us because sometimes math books or math software will kind of screw us up and they won't write the X first. It's very easy to read if the X comes first, X is less than two. We know that's numbers smaller than two. But if they flipped it around, it kind of gets confusing. So when we talk about inequality symbols, I want you to think about this as a mouth. Think of this as like a little Pac-Man, okay? And if this is a less than symbol, think about it that Pac-Man always wants to eat the bigger number, okay? <laughs> so this saying X is less than two is telling us two is the bigger number. Two is bigger than all of these X's. So let's think about that on a number line. If this is our number line, and I'm just gonna stick two on here somewhere, right? And, and this side could be like, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to like infinity, right? And then, numbers smaller than two, so one, zero, negative one, all the way down to negative infinity, right? I'm talking about X's that are less than two. So if all of my answers are less than two, then that means they're gonna be to the left of two, right? Or you can think about it as, look, thinking about Pac-Man, Pac-Man eats the bigger number. So if I make this into a Pac-Man, he's eating two. So two is bigger than all of my solutions. So wherever two is, there shouldn't be any solutions bigger than it because two is the biggest one, right? All right, so here's our shaded solution. So now I wanna be able to write it in interval notation. What interval notation says is that our answer could be from this small number up to this big number or anything in between. 
So what I have shaded is basically from way out here as far as negative numbers go up to two, right? So basically what that's saying is my answers could span all the way back to negative infinity as far as the eye can see, right? Or they could go all the way up to two. So this is how we're gonna write interval notation from negative infinity to two. Now we use symbols on the ends to show <clears throat> if these endpoint values are included or not, okay? Now infinities, that's, that's not really a number that we can include and say this equals infinity, right? So infinities, we're always gonna use parentheses because parentheses represent open intervals, or in other words, our endpoints are not included in our solution because we can't say X can equal negative infinity, right? So we're gonna use a parenthesis. Now when we look at two, we go back to our symbol, okay? We look at our little Pac-Man here. Notice this is a strict inequality. This is X is strictly less than two. That means it's not including two. If it was including two, we would have a Pac-Man like this, right? Our Pac-Man would have a goatee. <laughs> he would have a beard, right? Because we would have the less than or equal to bar. But since there's no equal to bar under here, two is not included. So again, we use a parenthesis. If there was an equal to bar there, then we would use a bracket because brackets represent closed intervals or in other words, endpoints are included, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at some examples. Now, first thing you should note is this big graph is just explaining what I just explained to you, showing you a whole bunch of different examples of what it could look like, okay? This is not something you're gonna be able um, to use like you know, on an exam or anything, but hopefully it's something that will kind of help you through your homework until you're, you're getting used to seeing this. So I wanna show you what it looks like to go from set notation to interval notation, and then also what it looks like to be given a graph and be able to write interval notation for it, okay? So first of all, let's look at our uh, set notation here. This says the set of all X's such that negative five is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to nine. So let's take all this extra fluff off for just a minute. If you just see negative five is less than or equal to X is less than nine, in our brains, right, just in common English talk here, this just looks like X is between negative five and nine, right? So that's what we wanna write for interval notation. We just wanna say that X is between these two values or it could be anything in between those two values. So we know for this, our solution is gonna span from negative five to nine, right? X is between negative five and nine, so it's any number between negative five and nine, right? And then we wanna put um, our parentheses or brackets on the ends. So notice here, this one is a less than or equal to. So because it has that equal to bar, that means that X could actually be negative five. And if it could actually be negative five, then we wanna use a bracket, right? On the other end, if X is less than nine, then we wanna go ahead and say it's not including nine, right? Because there's no equal to bar. So on this side, we're gonna use a parenthesis, okay? Let's look at another one. This one says the set of all X's such that negative 13 is less than X. Okay, so let's think about that. This is not written in the nice order that we like it to be written in, like this one up here. They wrote the X at the end. So let's think about this in terms of Pac-Man. So if I look at this as my Pac-Man, right? My Pac-Man is eating the X, okay? That means the X is bigger, right? So this is saying negative 13 is less than X, or in other words, all of my solutions, all of my X's are bigger than negative 13. So to help us visualize this, and you won't have to do this, but if it helps you, I encourage you to. If we visualize this, I'm gonna go ahead and just put this reference number, negative 13 on a number line. I know this is my positive infinity direction, right? And this is my negative infinity direction. If all of my X's, this is the big number, if all of my X's are bigger than negative 13, which side of negative 13 are they gonna be on? Well, if they're bigger, they're gonna be to this side of negative 13, right? So it's gonna be anything over there, okay? 
So now, if I want to write interval notation for this, this says that my answer falls anywhere between negative 13 and infinity. Negative 13 and infinity. And now I just need to decide which symbols to use. So notice here, it says negative 13 is less than x, right? It's a strict less than. There's no equal to bar. Pac-Man does not have <laughs> a goatee, right, or a beard. <laughs> so that means it's not included, so we're going to use parentheses. And then again, no value can actually equal infinity. So when it comes to infinities, we always use parentheses, okay? All right, I'm going to skip these two so that you can do them in a minute, but I do want to show you one with a graph really quick. So when we look at a graph, again, we're wanting to write interval notation for the graph that's represented. So first of all, let's think about these graphs. If I think about these graphs, I know that this is the negative infinity side, this is the positive infinity side, and I want to write an interval such as this, right, to represent this graph. So notice with interval notation, we always go from the lowest, here, let me come back up here, we always go from the lowest value to the largest value. So for this shaded region, we went from negative infinity up to 2, right? For this one that we did, we went from negative 13 up to infinity. So we always do it from left to right. So on this graph, the furthest to the left that the shading is going to go, well, if it has an arrow, that means it's going to keep going and going and going out to negative infinity. So this is going to go from negative infinity up to what value? So my shading is going to go all the way up to this point right here. That's negative 1. So from negative infinity to negative 1. And then we just have to determine what um, uh, symbols to use on the ends. Okay, So infinities always have parentheses because we can't include them. It's not an actual number. And then to see what value goes on my number value, my reference endpoint here, I just look at my graph. My graph here had a parenthesis, which means that it's not included. I can get as close as possible, but not actually equal negative 1. Okay. All right, so what I want for y'all to do is I want y'all to do the last two um, problems under set notation, and then I'd like for y'all to try the last two graphs. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, uh, give those a try, and then when you're ready, play the video again, and we'll go over them. All right, here we go. Let's see how you did. This one basically says that x is between 10 and 30. So we're going from 10 to 30, and because both of these are strict inequalities, we're using parentheses on both sides, okay? We okay on that one? On the second one, this one's kind of funky, because again, they wrote the x at the end, which is super stinky, right? So we have to kind of think about Pac-Man. So if I draw a Pac-Man on this, notice Pac-Man wants to eat the four. So that means the four is bigger. So the 4 is bigger than all of my x's. If 4 is bigger than all of my x's, all of my x's are going to have to be to the left of 4 so that it's the bigger number. Does that make sense? Okay. So if all of my answers are to the left of 4 because 4 is bigger, then that means that they are spanning all the way out to negative infinity. Right? So I'm going from negative infinity up to 4, and because this one has a equal to bar under the inequality, then we can use a bracket on that 4, okay? All right, and then on the last two graphs, we can see that this shading goes from negative 7 to 5, and we just copy the symbols off the graph. So negative 7 with a bracket over to 5 with a parenthesis. And on our last graph, it's going from 3 and it's continuing on. Anytime you see this arrow, that means it keeps going and going and going. So this one starts at 3 with a bracket and it's going to continue on out to positive infinity. And we always use a parenthesis on our infinity. Okay. All right. So that is the end of J6, which is our interval notation. Um, you can now complete that assignment. If you have any questions, please let me know.